somos una gente desobediente y por eso... Tenemos que movilizar fuerzas en el extremo sur de la llanura para que los flancos del este y el oeste. Where is Abraham Reyes? Here, amigo, here. Well, 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 look who it is. The American bandit turned bounty hunter who is about to win the Mexico Revolution. I don't know about that, mister. No, but I do, Mr. John Marston. I do. A man like you or me with. With just a few such men, I tell you I could rule the entire country. Hey, hermanos unidos, set my people free! Libre Mexico! like food to me. I feel I was sent for them and they were sent to me. Good for you. Uh, when I rule these people, I shall be fair and judicious and wise. How so, you ask? Very simple. I know these people. I know this land. In, in short, I can make them better. It must be pleasant to be a man so at one with his destiny. Ay, Dios mío, I don't do it for myself, John Marston. I do it for my people. Well, exactly. Sarcasm, my friend, should be beneath a man such as you, don't you think? Very little is beneath a man such as me. Ha! <laughs> okay, well, well, in that case, I assume a little robbery will be a pleasant day's work. All in a good cause, of course. Come, my brother. Let us strike while the iron is hot. Follow me. We must hurry. Yeah. Andale. You must tell me more, John. Are my sources correct? Have you come to Mexico to murder your two best friends? Not exactly. We were friends once. A lot's changed since then. Now that we are friends, I hope you will give me some warning if you get a sudden urge to kill me. You'll be the first to know when I kill you, I promise. So where are they? Who? Williamson and Escuela. I'm not sure exactly where. They are definitely in Mexico. That much I know already. You told oh, me you'd found Oh, what are you writing? Ella. And I will. I have my very best man working on it. If I find out you're lying to me, Reyes, you'll really see the man I used to be. I will give you your friends, I promise. Just give me time. Carajo, cuidado, John. So how did you meet this Williamson Song and Escuella? We ran in the same gang together. Under a fella called Dutch. We were all bad kids. Lost, angry, and forgotten. He kind of saved us. And turned you into criminals? Dutch didn't see us that way. We robbed banks, stole from the rich, and we gave the money to people who needed it more. So he was a revolutionary too, like me. I suppose yeah, you're he saw us that the down, system Marston. of power was rotten, that good people had been crushed for too long. And he believed that change could only succeed if it was brutal and relentless. Make America what he felt it was supposed to be. I like the sound of this man, Dutch. Another violent idealist. Where is he now? I don't know. Oh, but I gotta find him once writing. I'm done with them two. In the end, he went insane. Lost faith in everything. In everyone. Yeah. 
You have quite a story, John Marston. I really am a little jealous. Jealous? Of his poetic potential, I mean. He would make an excellent corrido. A bullfight? No, mi hermano. Carajo, cuidado, John. Vamos! No, a corrido is as Mexican as Mexico itself. A song, a poem, a story, a ballad. A musical tribute to a heroic man and their great deeds. There are over a hundred written about me. Remind me to stay away from men with guitars. In a country where most people cannot... Yeah, that you're slowing us down, Marston. We do what we can to battle the lies and propaganda of the government. I know. I've seen your poster. In the capital, they are already talking about my legendary escape from El Presidio. How I fought off a thousand Mexican soldiers with my bare hands. Finally, the people have the truth. I have to know, what did you think of Agustin Allende, young? I saw enough to know he ain't a good man. It is bad enough. He oh, watch what you're writing. But it is worse that he enjoys it. Something must have made him that way. Cowardice made him that way, my friend. That and Sanchez, of course. Who? General Ignacio Sanchez, our country's kind and generous dictator. Everything comes from him. It is like a father who beats his son, and then the son takes his dog outside and rapes him. That's a very specific example, Abraham. Es una marioneta. How do you say a, a, a puppet? Everything he does is controlled by Sanchez. In America? They told us Sanchez was making things better here. Pinche propaganda. He talks about economic reform, about carajo, cuidado, John. But look around you. The people are poorer than ever. Not far now. Chuparosa is just up ahead. We must hurry. The train will be leaving soon. What's on that train that's so important? I received information that the army is transporting a vast quantity of supplies to distribute to their forces. Do we have a plan? I want yes, that you're slowing us down, Marston. I figured as much. Today, Allende will pay a high price for his treason. Slow it up now. So listen, this train is filled with valuable supplies we need, but it's also filled with government troops. We'll set off a very loud distraction, you can board the train, and then you can disconnect the army cars, huh? Okay. Okay, but listen, we've got to get this done before the train rolls out of the station. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> well, did I not promise you fun times, amigo? Huh? There are too many soldiers. We must surprise them. Here, take this knife. You can use it to kill the guards quietly. Wait until I distract them. Then get on that train as fast as you can, Jung. Good luck. Give me some time to get their attention.
Move like a cat onto that train. Magnificent. Go ahead and blow the armored car and take whatever you need, my brother. Vámonos. What are you waiting for? We need to get into that armored car. Hurry, John. The army will be sending more soldiers.
<laughs> Not a bad day of robbing the establishment to give to the poor, eh, Mr. Marston? Very noble, I'm sure, but I need to know where Williamson and Escuela are holed up. All in good time, amigo. I'm off to deliver these goods. I'll see you back at the ranch. Oh, my spies tell me they soon will have the information you need. Próxima vez que sea un poco más durito, ¿eh? <laughs> And I mean rougher, ¿eh? <laughs> What would your most loyal follower, Luisa, say about that? Uh, who? Luisa, the girl from Campo Morada. Uh, all right. A gentleman never tells, but she was a most wonderful... Uh, I just say she was increíble. Yes. Let me tell you something. I strongly recommend her. You take her when you have the chance, my brother. <laughs> she thinks she's your wife. My wife? These peasant girls, they believe every word a fellow says. So naive. It's really quite charming. I love peasants. Don't you love peasants? I love them. They have such purity. Are you gonna marry her? Ha! Marry a peasant? My dear boy, don't be absurd. I'm going to be the next president of Mexico. My wife will meet ambassadors, kings, other great men, the very thought that I would marry some peasant girl with a tight gun and the hands of a farmer. Well, I really don't think so. My mother, que Dios la cuide, would turn in her grave. Interesting. Mm. But come on, let's run. I've got an amazing present for you, my brother, huh? Yes, the man you seek. Together, we will bring them to justice. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, mi hermano. This is the day we have both been waiting for. Bien. Vamos, hermanos. My men will launch a ruse attack on the side entrance to the fort. Meanwhile, you, my American friend, will drive this wagon at the front gate and jump off when you're close. It's been packed with five crates of TNT. That sounds crazy. How long's the fuse? <laughs> yes, like I say, fun times. It's plenty long enough, I think. I see you in there, amigo. Remember to jump, my friend. Ah! <laughs> 
You're here, old friend. Did you harm me or boy 
Javier, I just want to talk. Hello, old friend. It's been a long time. <laughs> Hello, brother. It's uh, good to see you. I heard you was coming. You took your time, no? Come on, you're not gonna shoot your own brother, are you? We was family. Yeah, we were. Then you and Dutch went crazy and family didn't mean so much. <laughs> so, now you do the government's work. And what do you do? You just work for a different government. <laughs> Come on, brother. I think we should go our separate ways, huh? What you and Dutch did was wrong. And the way you left me was wrong. No, I hate to judge, but as it turns out, it's you or me. The way I see it, might as well be you. We thought you was dead, brother. I promise. I'm telling the truth. Besides, I can give you Bill. In Dodge, Dodge is in Colombia. I can take you straight to him. Hmm? If you left me to die, Whoa. To save your own skin. And now, <laughs> you expect me to care whoa, about whoa, you? you got it all wrong, brother. I've always loved you. Even now. You never won! You got us, Mr. John! I'll kill you! with now, huh? It's over, old friend. I got you now. I'm taking you in, my brother. I'll let the others judge it. Where's Bill? Where's Bill, you son of a bitch? Do you think I won't kill you, brother? He ain't here, brother. It's for the agenda. Ah! Just meal. There we go. It's a little late for revenge, John. I ain't here to kill you, Javier. This is just business. You're gonna be locked up for a hell of a long time. Unless they choose to hang you. Come on, amigo. Abigail wouldn't want this. Abigail would have killed you already. She always thought you was a creep. Family, brother. Viva you and me. Like Cain and Abel, I guess. Oh, you piece of shit. Don't be sure about what you're doing, brother. You saw me out. Didn't that life we had mean nothing to you? Oh, ah, oh, you puto. Oh, one day, one day, I promise you, you're gonna regret this. One day's about all you got left. Oh, I hope you and your wife and children rot in hell. 
You know, that life we lived is over. And when we was living it, it didn't mean nothing anyway. It was just an excuse, and we all knew. What I knew is that you was always a puto. And you're still a puto. Marston, come with me. The army sent reinforcements. Come. Yeah, go with your puto. <laughs> The army is coming! Get up there and man that cannon! Two old friends reunited. It is a beautiful thing. Mr. Marston, fancy seeing you down here. I must say it's a pleasant surprise to see you. You've done well, Mr. Marston. Now, Javier here gets to see how far the hand of justice can reach. Come on, you. Get in the damn automobile. Can we assume one of my commitments is cleared? Unfortunately, Nothing is clear, John, until your obligations are met. We need you to find Williamson, then head to Blackwater as quick as you can. We have reason to believe that Dutch Vanderland is in the area. Oh, your wife sends her regards. <laughs> Otra vez. 
<laughs> Welcome to Mexico. My brothers and I are just discussing the future of our country. Okay, let this man go. And who are you, gringo? I'm no one. But unless you want this town to tear you and your boys to shreds, I suggest you let him go. And you think you could tell me what to do, friend? Oh, you should listen to him, friend. Look at that. You want to risk it? <laughs> the American is a drunk. If I were you, I would, I would pull that trigger. Put the gun down, Americano. Ya, ya, mátalo. Dejen mi hombre. Mierda! Huh? Ay, Dios Man. mío. Puta Santa Maria! So you want to settle this now, friend? Or you want me to shoot you in the head right now for that poor girl? Okay, but we fight like men, not like dogs. <sighs> Someone might as well have this. Untie me! We must escape now while we have the chance! Vamos! There will be more in their way! Senor, there are prisoners in jail who will fight on our side. Can you save them? I will rally the peasants, John. You go after the prisoners.
¡Hachas! ¡Echen la puerta abajo!
What the hell are you doing? Find my freedom, pendejo. Now shut up, you dumb ape. And get out of the wagon. Apurate! I'm coming out! Don't shoot! Here. Take Williamson. Just let me live. I will leave the country, I promise. You always was weak-minded. You're the one who let Dutch drive you insane! Dutch wanted you dead! We all dead! Well, I'm going after him next! I'll outlive all of you! You always was a traitor! You bastard! Well, all right, John. I, I, I'll, I'll come quietly. Allende is dead! Mexico is mine! My people are free, and it is all thanks to you, John. And to the people who laid down their lives. People like Luisa. Oh, yes. She, she was very brave, and she will be missed. Who was she again? Your peasant girl wife-to-be? Oh, yes, of course. She, she will have a day named after her. Laura's day. Luisa. What? Oh, yes, I, I knew Laura as well. Magnificent girl. Like riding a pompous bull it was, amigo. You never saw anything like it. Anyway, enough about sport. Let's get back to politics. I trust you will join us in riding on the capital. I'd love to, but with Williamson dead, my jailers need me back in Blackwater. Hey, que hace? Levantense. Well, I must say, I'll miss you, John Marston. I doubt you'll even remember me, Abraham, but it's been an experience. Good luck with the revolution. If you win power, remember why you wanted it. Mm. Well, travel safely, amigo. Come on. Almost got me. Como estamos hoy?
That's what I need. Nah. How are you doing? Hello there. My weapons are the mejores in Escalera. As you like. I am at your service. That's all I need for now. Thank you for... Visiting my tienda. Every time I end up to my tienda, I am so proud. Quieres esconder como una mujer, cabrón. How's he getting so close? Mr. McKenna, what are you doing here? Thought you were running a film company. Oh, Marston, how the fates have spurned me. The muses cajoled and lament my foolish nature. The hubris. The hubris! It gets the best of us. I've lost everything. Every last dime I invested in that studio is gone. The production was delayed by weather. That fool Spatchcock fell in love with the cameraman and ran off to Canada. Damn you, the gods of bad weather! And the hearts of vain men. Guess I'll have to go and make dreams elsewhere. Good luck. It'll take more than luck to stop me. Sir, I have a career to resurrect. That's the flower.
Hey, mister. Is there anything of yours you'd like to stick into something of mine? You're a nice lady and all, but this ain't my thing no more. Hello there, sir. You look like a man who can do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Then looks can be deceiving, pal. Perfect. As honesty is in my business the worst policy. I work for our well-respected governor, Nate Johns. That makes sense. Now, there is a certain individual spreading nasty rumors about Mr. Johns. I'd like you to put a stop to this vile gossip and malingering. Suppose I can handle that? For the right price? Now, this individual has had the misfortune to be photographed enjoying some rather inappropriate company. Been seen with a local whore. Take these photographs to him. After you take care of business, return to me, and I'll pay up the reward for your services. You're doing great things for your state, dear friend. You should be proud. Please, sir, this is an urgent matter. Sorry, ma'am, I'm married. The governor seems to be planning a run. He's already Yikes. Yikes. I hear Mr. Reyes won a big victory down in Mexico. Hello, sir. All quiet here, I hope.
105. I'm here to see Mr. Ross. 107. 109. Edgar Ross. 113. Upstairs on the right. 114. 115. 116. 117. Mr. Marston, so glad to see you. How was your journey? Where's my wife and son? Being well looked after. Well looked after. I want to see him. Mr. Ross wants to speak with you. We've had some important developments. You want me to take out a gun and blow a fucking hole in your head right here? <clears throat> right now? You want that? Mr. Marston. You want that? Mr. Marston, I ask you to calm down. Why? Why? I did what you asked. I got you Williamson and Escuela. It's over. Stop playing games with me. No one's playing games with you, Mr. Marston. But if we were to play some games, there'd be some interesting ones we could play. Thanks, sir. Like hanging you for murder, or confiscating all your property, like that little farm of yours, or, or having you put in an electric chair. Those are the sort of games we could play. But we choose to play a different game. So calm down and play along with us. Where's my wife? <laughs> you know, I forget, but I hear it's very nice this time of year. <sighs> Mr. Marston, please, I've never insulted your meager intelligence. Do not insult mine. We've done this little deal for your freedom in exchange for all your men from your old gang. You gave us Williamson and Escuela. We still don't have Vanderlyn, but now we know where he is. Then go and shoot him. No, sir. I want you to shoot him for me. And then I'll let you be. The last thing I want to do is make martyrs out of all these people. He could be killed by some petty squabble by another lowlife. <laughs> we believe Vanderlyn just holed up with a group of renegades near the wreck of the Serendipity Riverboat. Ah, <sighs> yes. Another group of renegades. Obviously, the first group, your group, has shall we say, been disbanded? <laughs> <laughs> disbanded. Anyway, Mr. Ford and Mr. Marston, shall we go? Oh, Mr. Marston, your wife and son are, are doing well. Let's both try to ensure things stay that way. Okay? After you, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, one more thing. This is for you. You're too kind. See, I have nothing but your best interest at heart. Let's hope it doesn't go off by mistake. 343. I, I have a patent for that, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, Mr. Marston. <laughs> You're alive. Hello, Wes Dickens. <laughs> Thought you were headed to Peking. Um, so did I. So did I. A long story. But now it seems I'm being put under arrest and charged with narcotic possession or some other such nonsense. Ross, have him release this man. Why? Because he's a harmless old fraud, the kind of man that built this country. And because he helped me get Williamson. Did you hear that, officer? The man's a hero. Let him go. Come on, Marston. Moral degeneracy waits for no man. Let's hurry along. <laughs> 344, 345, 348, 3... I thought you were supposed to be a changed man! Head for the wreck of the serendipity, Mr. Fordham. It's not far now. The old serendipity wreck has been used as an occasional criminal hideout for years. We were informed that Vanderlyn and his gang are making camp there. 
We'll stop on the cliff above, and you and Agent Fordham will go on foot. I'll stay with the vehicle and keep watch. And you'll do as I say, Marston. Don't try anything stupid. Oh, I think he knows what's at stake. Don't you, Mr. Marston? Let's find Dutch and finish this. Come on then, Marston. You're with me. Keep quiet and stay close. Yes, sir. Vanderlind is the priority. We go in, take him down, and get the hell out of here. Quick and clean. You leave Dutch to me. We don't want you getting that suit dirty. If you step out of line, even once, well, I hope you're aware of the consequences. What are you doing? Seems real quiet, don't you think? You tell me. Maybe Dutch caught wind of things. That informant better not have been lying to us. Keep your eyes open. They are open. I don't see nothing. It doesn't feel right. This place is usually teeming with lowlifes. Did you hear that? Go see what's happening up there. I'll wait here. Ah! Hurry, there's somebody up there. Over here! I found him! Good God, that's her informant! Gnostics, what the hell's going on here? It's a trap! Shit, Marston! You'll have to carry this man! I don't think you can walk! What the hell's happening? Devil! We need to clear a path out of here! Not so tough now, are you? You pretty sidewinder. Keep moving, you coward! My word! Put down your weapons!
that the best you can do? Stay with me. going. Who's this? What in God's name is going on? Marston, lift this fellow into the back seat. Put him in the car so we can get out of here. Let's go, there might be more of them. Christ alive! What the hell happened down there? It was a trap, they were waiting for us. And who is this savage? A prisoner? This is the informant, sir. Do you speak English? Uh, uh yes he does, sir. He's the informant, Nostis. Don't get snarky with me, Fordham. We found him tied up on the boat, then they jumped us. Nice of you to help us out. Hell of a plan sending in two men to take on an entire gang of outlaws. Especially when one of them's an office clerk. Or social secretary or some Just such. Just shut your mouth! just gave out. Well, fix it, you fool. We need to get this man to a doctor. Of course, sir. It's Dutch's men. Marston, we'll hold them off. Fordham, we'll fix that damn engine.
can't see any more of them. Fordham, are we ready? Yes, sir, I think so. Come on, let's get back to Blackwater. Damn, that was close. We're lucky to be alive. I'm beginning to see why Mr. Marston here has made it to such a ripe old age. You'll make me blush with all these kind words. So much for this automobile of yours. If this is the future, God help us all. It's not the automobile. A bad workman shouldn't blame his tools. Perhaps if Mr. Fordham maneuvered it with a little more finesse... I was trying to escape an ambush, sir. Even if it was running fine, they'd still have caught us. I can walk faster than this piece of crap. Give me a horse any day. So what now? Do I get to see my family? Where is Dutch Vanderlyn? I don't know. In that case, old boy, no, you don't get to see your family. It's a fairly simple agreement, Mr. Marston, even for a man as devoid of intellect as yourself. If you'd like me to explain it to you again, I'd be more than willing. No, you've said enough. We'll find Vanderlyn soon enough. For now, however, I suggest we call it a day. So how does it feel, taking a man's wife and child from him? Does it make you feel good? How does it feel to kill hundreds of men in cold blood? You're a coward. You're a murderer. Actions have consequences, Mr. Marston. Come now, try to look on the bright side. The bright side? There ain't no bright side. Your family is enjoying a much-needed vacation, and in far more luxurious surroundings than those to which they are accustomed, I assure you. Soon you will be able to start a new life together, absolved of all your sins. We should take the ending to Professor McDougal, see what he can get out of him. Good idea, sir. I just can't communicate with them. Here we are. Thank God for that. So, this is the office of an anthropologist named McDougal. He was thrown out of Yale for a degeneracy. We should tell you something. Indeed, but he's been helping us deal with the natives in this area. They see him and they presume we're all idiot academics. Huh? Give me a hand here, Marston. Ah, Mr. Ross, uh, Mr. Fordham? G good day, G good day. What on earth's going on here? Kid got shot in the leg. <sighs> Beat up pretty good. We'll send a doctor. Now, McDougal, mm -hmm. uh, we need information from this fellow about Dutch Vanderland. Can you see what you can find out for us? Do my best, sir. Make sure you do. <laughs> Professor McDougal has been a good friend of the U.S. government, Mr. Marston, just like you. Why don't you see if you can help him in his study of the native problem in this county? That's a good thing. fella. What do you think of our governor, Nate Johns? Nate Johns? Why, that no good lying, backstabbing bastard, I'd like to see him horse whipped. <laughs> Why you ask, friend? Need to make sure I had the right man. Would you care to take a quick look at a couple photographs of you coming out of a fine place of not much repute? What? Uh... Ah, <laughs> uh, as I was saying, uh, before I was so rudely interrupted, Nate Johns is a fine, fine man and an even better governor. And I consider it an honor to call him my friend. <laughs> Wise man.
Cambridge, overthrown! Get your paper! That is most lovely. In. We're open for business. Hello, friend. You're a discerning consumer. That's why you've come here, am I right? You want something else? Ma'am. John Mark is gonna know to respect the law when I see him. Hello. I don't know how you get away with these prices, mister. Blackwater Ledger is being blackmailed by the East Indian Tobacco Company. Thanks. Incredible. Simply incredible. Hello, Professor. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, sir. Good day, good day. How are you? Well, my family's health and well-being are being threatened by some unscrupulous government agents, and my own hard-won freedom is under duress. But these problems aside, I suppose I'm fair. Ha, <laughs> yes, the problems of civilizing nomads. Uh, tell me, sir, are you from Norse stock? Not as far as I know. I was raised in an orphanage. My father was Scottish. Hmm, unfortunate. Uh, you'd make an interesting case for my theory of natural population characteristics. Really? Well, yes. A, a white man, obviously, but, but, but with a savage spirit. Uh, uh, trust me, sir, I mean savage in the best possible sense. Uh, natural nobility, but also simple, uh, pure. Uh, I've been looking at some blood samples through my microscope, and, and you know what? No. Oh, well, of course you don't. It's a remarkable breakthrough. I've been looking at the blood of both natives and white men of corresponding height, weight, and age, and you know what? Again, no. They're exactly the same. It's remarkable. It completely refutes my last book. But I'll tell you what, sir. This sabbatical in the field may have been somewhat forced upon me by circumstance, but my scholarship has benefited enormously. Would you uh, like to partake of a syringe of cocaine? I've quite enough for two. Not right this minute, no. So it's such a remarkable drug. It entirely restores the ego. Uh, it takes one back to a primal state. Uh, it helps my thinking enormously. <laughs> oh, oh, Nastas, uh, uh, come on. Uh, 
Come in, sir. Would you like to take off your slippers? Or, or, or skin a rabbit? <clears throat> I know we cannot see the stars, but still my heart is pure, and we meet as equals. These savages must be spoken to simply in metaphors. <laughs> no, sir. I grew up on a reservation and attended school. Oh, lovely. <laughs> but I can show you what you want to see. I know where the group of bandits you seek are hiding, both of you. Vanderlyn has attracted a following of young men on the reservation. They are turning to bad things. The savage heart cannot be conventionally civilized. I was right all along. <laughs> Where's Dutch Vanderlyn based? In the hills, in Cochinet. Let's go. I know a way there that is not guarded. Uh, marvelous, <laughs> it's simply marvelous. A scientist, a criminal, and a savage. <laughs> what a strange trinity we make. Follow me. Let's go. So, I understand we have a mutual interest in Mr. Vanderland? You gonna kill him too? Kill him? Good God, no. What is it with you people out here? No, Vanderland fascinates me. A white man living among natives. A civilized mind turned savage. It's reverse integration or regressive acculturation. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't found a name I like yet. He was never that civilized. Ah, but of course. <laughs> Edgar Ross mentioned your unique history with the man. Although I was away with the fairies at the time, I must admit. Surfing great waves of euphoria. <sighs> Anyway, get uh, some kind of Robin Hood, Oedipus, communist tale of naivete and betrayal, if I remember correctly. We ran in a gang together, Professor. I wouldn't try to read too much into it. It's my job to read too much into everything, dear boy. Nastas, are, are you sure this is the right way? Yes, sir. It's rather dark. Ain't you never seen trees before? I thought you were a brave cultural explorer. It's this way, mister. Good Lord, no. I rarely leave my room. I explore with a mind, Mr. Marston. Enjoy it while you still can. Soon you will have cut down all of these trees. Me? Or are you making a sweeping statement about the white man in general? There is no respect for the land anymore. I'm sensing some hostility, Nastas. Some anger. Talk me through this primal emotion, where it's coming from. Don't worry about it, Professor. here and climb the rest of the way. Remarkable. I'm afraid I don't really have much of a head for heights. 
more of a, a head for highs. <laughs> well, well, anyway, I'm sure Nastas will help you. I must be on my way. I've got work to do. Thanks for the help. Goodbye, gentlemen. Enjoy yourselves. Come on. I see a spot where we can climb up. See if you can find another route, Mr. Marston. I will have a look around. I think there's a path through this cave. I'm sorry, mister. Good. This should save us some time. This way. I'm hurt pretty bad. I don't think you should go any further. I'll be fine. But you go ahead. I don't want to slow you down. Are you sure you're all right? Just need to take it slow. Go on. I'll catch up or see you on the way down. Don't worry about me. Go look for Vanderlyn. Good luck. To the victor, the spoils.
Come on. Let's get this over with. Mr. Marston? Mr. Marston! Mr. Marston! Here you go, Mr. Marston. Put that stuff away. You banged your head. Nastas and I carried you down. Mm. Uh, well, uh, Nastas uh, heard the shots and he hurried up to rescue you and he carried you down. I improvised an escape plan. I'm more of a planner than a man of action. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Friends of mine are with Vanderland. We must try to reason with them, sir. Vanderland's gang contains several natives. We must meet with them and try to save them from disaster. My people have already endured many disasters. Before, this was all our land. And now we have brought you civilization. Well, sure, it hasn't been easy, but it hasn't been easy for anyone, Nastas. Why, I knew a man in Yale whose father once shot 18 natives in one afternoon out in Wyoming. Oh, the man was quite, quite traumatized. He took to lying with choir boys. For a wise man, you are a very stupid man, mister. Gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to figure out right from wrong. You are simple-minded, sir. Thus, I do not blame you for not understanding reason. Then again. <laughs>
What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informer just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there. That door is the only way in and out of the building, so cover it tight. Do you see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. I'm dragging you out of here. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Someone's coming out. He's unarmed. Hold your fire. The bastard's killed. Open fire. Get the man in the window. to the bank with Hopkins and Manny. Get Dutch. Be careful. There may be some innocent people there. We can take them! Come on, let's get in there! Marston, shoot the door open! Keep an eye out for civilians!
it's nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. How's Abigail? Well, I hope. I ain't seen her for a while. Because you've been chasing me? Let the woman go, Dutch. Of course. Of course. How's your little boy? He ain't so little now. No, he must be what? 15? 16? Doesn't time fly? Don't adjust. It's over, man. Of course. Of course. I surrendered, John. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint, but equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch, by making compromises we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, <laughs> but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. No! God damn! Let's get after him! I don't see him! What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston. You got a gun too, Sheriff. You waited too long. Next time, I'll just shoot the girl. That's enough. Come on, let's find the bastard. Mount up, he went this way. Yeah, Abraham! Yeah!
speed room back there. Can I borrow this, friend? Marston, get over here. Where's Dutch, Marston? He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall. Oh, Lord, this is nasty. Marston, sir! It's good to see you, old bean. Good to see you. And you too, Professor. Forgive me. I am in a state of remarkable agitation, partly due to standard narcotic impulses, but also due to the fact that I have finally solved the riddle that has tormented my mind these past eight years. What's that? The nature of the savage soul! What makes some societies great, like ours, and others, uh, yeah, not worse. I would never use a pejorative such as worse, but, 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 but lesser! Meaning? Meaning. What makes these beings less human than us? Closer to beast on the continuum between animal and god! You know, I argued with Fortescue at Yale about this. It caused a minor scandal. But I shall be proven right, sir! I shall! Mark my words! I shall show them all what civilization is all about. The redskins and the nubs at Yale. Come, sir! I have a way to say them. Both our desires. I will bring you, Vanderlint and me, the evidence of savages reverting to type. Come, sir. Hmm. 
Where the devil is the start? He should be here with the horses. Where is he? Where is he? Come out of the darkness. Is my heart's beating like a drum. Try to calm down, calm Professor. Down. I I've never been so excited in all my life. Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. Research. What were you talking about back there? Where are we going? Nastas has set up a meeting. A powwow, I think they call it. A meeting of minds, of souls. Indians and whites, academics and criminals coming together to find a common understanding. Nastas, this fool's making no sense. Some of Vanderlyn's men have agreed to meet with Professor McDougal up at Bearclaw Cabin. Why the hell would they want to do that? I think they are interested to find out what conclusions a white man has reached on hundreds of years of culture and society from the comfort of his hotel room. Wonderful! Do you think I could ask for a skin sample from the soles of their feet? I don't think that's a good idea. I have to say, <laughs> a touch of the old jitters. No, kid. It's no small relief to have the two of you alone. Whoa, man. <laughs> Mr. Marston, I'm a little out of my comfort zone. Excuse me. Hello, gentlemen. We come in peace. Those words mean nothing coming from people like you. Look at what you've done to us. Look at us! We live like animals, scrabbling in the dirt. Well, I... Well, well, I... Well, violence isn't the answer. Maybe you live in a different America than we. Men like Vanderlint will lead you to disaster. I think we've already experienced disaster. The likes which you could only imagine. Put your hands up! We come in peace! Do as he says, Marston. You call this a meeting? Give me your damn weaponry. This is not what we agreed to. You shut your mouth, you treacherous snake! <laughs> Holy shit! Damn it, Dutch! <laughs> Professor, get down, now! Somebody go Kill the stars! I'll kill you! I don't know about you, Professor, but I say we get the hell out of here.
not borrow this print? Let's go! We should move quickly! There's plenty more where they came oh my from! my god, I feel terrible! My head is pounding! Getting shot at will do that I to you! I completely drained! It's like my body has aged ten years! Stop moaning and run! My life. I wish I could say the same. Blackwater. Oh, I will never talk ill of you again. Civilization in all its glory, Mr. McDougal. And am I glad to be back? I'm in dire need of a syringe. Something to clear the mind, restore the spirit. So you ain't planning on sleeping then? Sleep? My dear boy, I'll probably never sleep again. You look like you have been Easy. and sound. Thank the Lord. So much for a meeting of minds. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I could be boiling in a pot right now if it wasn't for you. Get some rest, Professor. Hello, sir. Professor! Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, sir. You know, you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir? No, I don't. I'm not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I'm not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. <sighs> You okay, Professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Oh, oh. oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. 
You and, and, and your friend there, the professor, we're going to kill the both of you. Why you want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. <laughs> we're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Lisa, what are we going to do? I'm going to hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're going to run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. This way. John! Help me, John! One more move, and he's a dead man. Oh, you took your sweet time! Christ alive! How many are there? We're completely surrounded! should be in an alleyway down here. What the devil? Can I borrow this, Brent? All right, get us out of this hell hole. Easy. Head for Manson, eat a post. I'm taking the first train out of here! This really couldn't have gone more horribly wrong! At least you got some good material for your next book! You know, I dreamt of documenting the last days of the Old West. 
the romance, the honor, the nobility. But it turns out it's just people killing each other. It always was, Professor. And the Old West ain't quite dead yet. Oh, I know, Mr. Marston. Believe me, I know. Come on. Leave me alone. My research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. Need a ride, friend? Well, uh... Hello there, sir. Hey, these are all horses. You can't just... Oh, all right. What's your destination? I need to go to Hennigan instead. Keep it up, friend. I'll wake you when we arrive. All right. Wake me up when we get there. That's all she wrote, buddy. What brings you out this way? What you searching for, partner? I've been gathering some flowers for my wife. She's waiting for me back in the cabin. That's very sweet of you. And we've been together 50 years now, me and my darling Annabelle. She's always loved these these wild fever few that uh, grow around this place. You know. But she's, she's getting on now in years, and she, it's hard for her to get up and about. 
Ty, I wanna, I wanna bring her a lovely bouquet for our anniversary. Well, I've seen quite a few flowers in my travels. If you'd like to help. Oh, yeah. Listen, these old fingers ain't what they used to be. Yeah, I'd love it. Sure, bring me, bring me any pretty ones you find, huh? Well, don't let the grass grow under your feet. Sorry, miss. You My fault. Drink? How impolite. What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. <laughs> but since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you? Oh, boy, it's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east, only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure, civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers or whatever in God's name you were just talking about is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah, as I said, I'm not a great intellect. 
now. After the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. trigger until we get out of Blackwater. Go quick! Take a look at this thing! Have you seen this? It's got a gun on the back! Oh my poor day! I've ever seen such a oh. iron dragon! That's... Here they come! Look! They brought the machine gun! What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position, then. Have your men ready to run him down, if you have to. Dismiss! Load weapons and get to the sandbags! Move! Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Fingers on the triggers, boys!
Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to his student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, men. Let's move out. Come on. I can't believe Vandalin has built himself a fortress in the mountains. He's crazy, but he certainly ain't stupid. You've already seen that place, right? McDougal told me you went up there with that Indian chap. I've seen it, all right. We'll be lucky to last five minutes with this many men. Governor Johns is going to be very pleased. Nate Johns? What's he got to do with any of this? Let's just say he has a vested interest in cleaning the filth out of this region. I don't think our old friend Dutch realizes what a great favor he has done us, exciting all this hate among the natives. Like you needed an excuse. See, this is what happens when you fraternize with savages. How could you ever follow a man like that? How could you ever follow a man like Ross? Vanderlind is a psychopath, a murderer, and a rapist. Ross don't seem too different. Dutch was a good man once. Far better man than you. So what made him this way? I don't know. Bastards like you. Seeing that things never change. I hope you're ready to finish this mess. Anything to get you sons of bitches off my back. There's always somebody watching, Mr. Marston. I thought you'd have gleaned that much by now. You think you're so clever, don't you? No, it's you who thought you were clever. You thought you could just walk away from your own life. Make no mistake. We have been watching. Don't speak to me. You're really an ungrateful slug, Marston. All we need now is Father Christmas. Instead of punishing you for your crimes, we are giving you a chance to kill the men who betrayed you. You didn't have to punish my wife, too. Oh, please. She's hardly innocent. Don't you talk about her like that. Oh, I would never talk ill of dear Abby. Do you call her Abby or Abigail? I prefer Abby. Oh, I like the woman. A little rough for my taste, but very pleasant. <laughs> I can't wait to put a bullet in your head. When will this be over? It's you who's been dragging it out, not us. We sent you to Fort Mercer with the simple task of killing Bill Williamson. Next thing you know, you're running all over Mexico like a headless chicken. And now it's Dutch. But he's the last one of your merry band, is he not? Then you can go back to your farm, or what's left of it. If need be, you can always send your wife back out to work. I hear she works hard. Go to hell! This old gang of yours just won't die easily, will it? I wonder how many deaths you are all responsible for. How much money you took from pockets of hard-working citizens. We did more for the people with the money we took than the damn government ever did. Good God! This flawed philosophy yours again. If you wish to argue the finer points of ethics, I suggest you learn to read first. And I suggest you learn how to shoot people in the front, not the back. Telling me, but 
But if you feel like doing it, please be my guest. Well, this is suicide, if you ask me. My scouts have seen that fort of his. I wanted to wait for more men, but them city boys back there weren't having none of it. And you answer to them? Unfortunately, it seems that now we do. They said you was in a gang with this Dutch Vanderlyn. I was once, a long time ago. Don't seem like the kind of fella you want to run with. Unless I completely misjudge your character, of course. When he turned crazy, I left. At least I tried to leave. Till those suits back there came and knocking, threatened to kill my wife and son if I didn't go after them. Strange times we live in, partner. Strange times. It's a funny business. Army, government men, criminals, with all due respect. You're telling me? Too many hands on the tiller, if you ask me. This is how mistakes happen. My boys don't know who's giving the orders no more. Take it from me, mister. When we get up there, it ain't gonna matter. It'll be every man for himself. Soldier. Sorry, partner.
Let's see. Marston, we'll take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I will provide the cover fire. All right, men, blow that gate open. Get ready to hold off their fire, Marston. Hold them off! We need time to set the explosives! You ain't nothing but a bunch of women! Looks like it's me and you, John. You should have stayed at home. I suggest you follow me. You idiot! You should run off home. After all, I taught you. I'm ashamed. I don't have a choice. There's always a choice. You're just too blind to see. They got my family. Your family? Abigail was any man's wife, John. And Jack, he's another whore's son. Just like you. Son of a bitch. God damn it. 
You'll never take me alive, John! It's over, John! I ain't leaving here without you! Just like me, John. You can't change who you are. I ain't like you. the past, John. Kill me, it won't make it go away. That's where you're wrong. Hello again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change, can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see, then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed, John. Yeah. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. And now I know the 
this looks like the one. 